Field, home to the Texas A&M Aggies, the Corps of Cadets, the world-famous 12th man, Lady Reveille, and early indications, a whole throng of Aggies ready to make some noise. There's nothing quite like a great rivalry matchup in college football. The bitterness, the intensity, the lifetime of memories that will come as a result of what we're about to see in this one. As we'll see the number three team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, taking on the 24th ranked team in the land, the Texas A&M Aggies. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. Texas A&M set to kick off to christen this game. And they desperately wanted to attempt a return, but decided not to. Instead, they'll take the touchback. So Texas's offense is on the field for the first time today. These rivalry games can really get the blood pumping. We'll see who can manage their emotions best early. Everyone's been waiting for this game, right? You know both of these teams have had this game circled all the way back to the beginning of the offseason, so you've got to be able to play under control. With passion, with energy, with hatred, because it's a rivalry game, but keep your emotions in check and making sure I'm controlling what I can control. Oh, and he gets downfield for the big catch. He flips his field in an instant, and he's got him set up at the 20. And how about the big strike down the field? I love when offenses take shots down the field, try to make big plays. Now they're set up in the red zone. After that huge play, let's see if they can punctuate it. It's first and 10 from the 20. From the gun, the ground game. And a nice job by the running back, finding space, getting downhill, making a good run. Great job finishing with his pads. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. Feeling some heat. Receiver wasn't ready for the throw, incomplete. How nice is it to have the home crowd going absolutely bananas? Communication is harder. The, the snapping the football, everybody being on time. Man, this crowd really affecting the football. Didn't get much. Picked up a yard, and that will leave them with fourth and two. And the field goal unit is on the field. And the kicker delivers the three to salvage that drive. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. I'll tell you, this is not an easy place to play on the road, especially at nighttime. This crowd, they get loud. That's the way it's been so far, but they have a nice drive to open it up. They're able to execute. They put themselves in field goal range, knock it through the uprights. They did exactly what they needed to do, taking a 3-0 lead here early on the road. That's impressive. So after putting three on the board, the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away. On the run from inside his own five. Nice job by the kickoff team. Everybody stayed in their lanes and they'll stop him at the 16. So Texas A&M's offense will try to get something going with their first possession. When a guy gets off the ball as quickly as he does, you know he's going to be breathing down your neck, and you've got to get rid of it, Jesse. This quarterback's good, but he better have a clock going off in his head. He knows he's not going to have a lot of time to get rid of the football. That's a big matchup in this game. Well, And that's what I love about this guy, because he affects the quarterback whether he gets to him or not. He knows he's there. He's that kind of good coming off the edge. Let's see how this QB performs under pressure. Now on second and short after that pickup. Motion from the offense. Quick pass on the jet motion. Moves up to the 34-yard line, giving him a 10-yard pickup. I love that play call, and I love the timing of the pre-snap motion. Because the quarterback was able to get into the receiver right behind the offensive line, because of the timing, he was able to outflank the defense. That puts him out in space where he's able to use his speed. Nice job with the pre-snap motion and timing. Stumped almost in his track, but strong enough to pick up one to the 35. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. 
coming after it. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. And the defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes, as an offense, you're hoping the run fake's going to slow down those pass rushers. But man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. Probably the toughest call on the play sheet. Third and long. Ball's at the 25. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. Pressure coming. Still in the pocket and fires over the middle. And it goes through his hands. Oh, he had an explosive play right there for the taking, but couldn't reel it in. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. He's going to try to flip the field with this one. Running it back. It's Bolden. A little pressure on the coverage team there, and they'll stop him at the 47-yard line. So now the Longhorns take over, and they'll send out the offense. He had to settle for the chip shot field goal last time, Jesse. They'd love for this one to pay off bigger. Yeah, it just comes down to execution, too. Did a nice job out in the field, stalled a little bit once they got down to the goal line, so they just need to be a little bit more crisp here. Dude. Yeah, and listen, I think the first part was the most important part. you got to put the drive together first to get down there. Now, when we get down there, focus on execution and getting six points. Dropping back, it's Ewers. Unloads to the wideout. Oh, what a spectacular layout and catch. Man, I love those guys that are willing to put their body on the line. And he does it right here, man. Just lays out. That ball's coming in. You can see it from several yards out, making that play, laying out, keeping the football from touching the turf. Great concentration, great effort by the receiver. Guys, it is Texas who holds the lead. And after that first quarter, let's see if these guys can get back in the game in the second. get this quarter going with a second down play. He wants to throw here on second down. Fires to the wide out. And the laundry drops as the pass falls incomplete. Let's see who the penalty's on. <laughs> the officials offer the deal and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. This offense has a second down play. Off the bootleg and rolling out. This time it's complete. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Right. Second quarter, getting closer to the half. Offense is still having a lot of success, stringing some first downs together. Defense is going to need to figure something out before they get to halftime. And the Longhorns are flying down the field. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. Fights through the pile and picks up a couple down to the 16. You know, runs like this oftentimes are like a boxer in a boxing match. Obviously, it's not a knockout punch, but these are body blows. And as the game goes on, these small gains are going to turn into... And it's picked off right at the goal line. They make the tackle after the turnover, but hang on just a second. There's a flag on the field. Let's see if it stands. This offense plenty happy enough with the results of that play, so they just let the official put that flag back in his pocket and decline the penalty. This offense is so deep, it's teetering on the edge of a safety. Pass the sticks, and he may get more. And excellent vision to find running room there and make a really good pickup before the defense put a stop to it. Well, with the weapons this offense has, you knew it was just a matter of time in the run game before someone was going to break a long one. They'd just been running into a wall. They just couldn't seem to find their creases and get enough movement up front, but they finally got it there, picking up the first. Let's see what happens next. The hiatus in this great rivalry has been way too long, but guys, we were there the last time they squared off in 2011, and how great is it 
to have A&M and Texas back. It's one of the most special rivalries in all of college football, and unfortunately with conference realignment, it took this game away, but now that they're both back in the SEC, David, we're back on in this great game. Yeah, and we get to continue the hate, the pettiness. Just, you, you gotta love it, man. That's what makes rivals so good. In-state rivals going at it. We lose that with conference realignment, but we get it back with this one. They're trying to get to it. They'll run the screen. Sweet feet on the move. And they knocked him down, but he got past the line to gain. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown. And that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm. And what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his position. And he is swarmed under a host of defenders there to make the stop. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Looking to pass. It's Wegman. And he had it for a second, but it just dribbled out of his hands. Did Bevo really get his name after altering a brand on his backside put there by Texas A&M students? So many questions to answer since 1894, guys. And that's what's so cool about this rivalry. When you have the back and forth and who did what, going all the way back to 1894, Reese's first birthday, what an amazing rivalry. <laughs> There have been a lot of good players during that stretch, too. Think about Ricky Williams from the Horns, Johnny Manziel, Texas A&M. So many great coaches have patrolled the sidelines in this rivalry for years. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. A&M comes back out with another first down. From the red zone, looking for a space. And it just squirted through his hands. He wanted to take off and got too anxious. After misfiring, it's second down. Lasso! Lasso! He's looking to throw. He's got it on the run. And he strides his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggie! And I just love the execution by this offense. Late in the half, man, you want to take the lead. You want to get that momentum on your side, and they do it. They finish it with the passing game. And I'll tell you what, keep that passing game up. You can keep this lead, keep the momentum, and keep putting up numbers. Ready to try the point after. And the extra point makes it 7-3. to three. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. And he'll just take a knee, and this drive will start at the 25. Here comes the Texas offense. That last possession, a prime example, Jesse, of how things get condensed in the red zone. Hard to throw when the windows are smaller. And that's what happens down here at the goal line, David. For this quarterback here, just take accountability and ownership and come out here and lead your offense. And move on. Like, we needed points. That's something that we can harp on. We'll watch the tape this week, but now it's time to move on. Let's get another drive going. What a grab along the left sideline. Got the foot down in a strong throw. Put it right on the money. Touchdown, Texas! A great catch and run for six. Number seven. Man, that's a play this kid has been running ever since he was seven years old at the park with his best friend, throwing them go routes right down the field. I'm running by a guy, I'm looking back, locating the football, making the catch, and he does it in a big moment here in this game. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point puts them up by a field goal. They wasted no time on that drive. Got it on their 25, and two plays later, they're in the end zone. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. He'll bring it out. It's Owens. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. 
That last touchdown drive was surgical through the air, Jesse. It sure was, and that's why this offense is so dangerous, David, because they can score in a hurry because of how efficient they are throwing the football. And welcome to modern college football. That's what it is. Spread you out, find my playmakers, make quick decisions, and really put defenses in a difficult situation. A timeout is called as this offense tries to find a way to get more points on the board before the half. Facing a third down and short from the 26. Looking to throw for it. Got him downfield. All kinds of room to the right. He's at the 10. And he takes it all the way. They couldn't stop him. Touchdown, Aggie. That was a lightning fast drive that ends with a touchdown. If you can string a few more drives like that together, man, we might as well get our popcorn out because we're going to get a lot of score. Lining up for the PAT. And with the extra point, they're up 14 to 10. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. They kept that one off in style. A 74-yarder for the score. On the move from inside is five. Running through contact. Just never had a chance to shake loose, and he'll be brought down at the 24. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. They put it in the end zone the last two times they've had it, and now go back to work. And this is the best feeling when you're on offense, when you just know everything you're calling is working. When you're throwing... And he's running in the open. And they'll do more than move the chains. They'll move that thing more than 30 yards down the field before he's finally stopped. They say it's still a game of field position, and that last one just flipped this, baby. They've got it first and 10 in the red zone. To the ground with the back. And he's able to find a little bit of running room before they get him down. Clock will stop with this timeout from the offense. They'll get a chance to regroup on the sideline. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. Looking for room, it's Baxter. And he's loose, and he'll take it to the house. Touchdown, Longhorns! And that is exactly what you want from your offense. Man, late in the half, you want to execute and then punch it in physically on the ground. Take the lead going into the half. Take all the momentum. Nice execution on the drive by that offense. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point puts them up by a field goal. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And he found his way to the end zone from the seven to cap it. He'll bring it back from inside his five. And they'll get him on the ground as the offense comes out to start the next drive. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. Dang right. There's no time to be concerned. If we're a little bit down, listen, I just think this is a point with the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. Ball's at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. To throw, it's Wegman. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. The defense coming up big there, and the sack is great, but the secondary deserves some credit, too. No doubt. When you can cover like that in the secondary and drop back in your zone and only rush a few, and you feel comfortable getting home, and they're going to get to the quarterback, that is a great feeling, and that's fun to be a defensive coordinator calling the plays. He's got great speed. And how about the kick 
second game coming up with a play. That return man saw daylight the instant the ball touched his hands and he darted to it and took it to the house. And Reese, I think it's one of the hardest things to do in football to catch the ball as all these guys are flying around you and you got to take it, make a miss, try to find spaces and creases that aren't there. Great job making a huge play. Special teams and punt returns coming up big. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. Man, you just can't put a price on having a guy like that back there to return punts, and he turned that one into a touchdown. He'll bring it out. It's Allen. Rolling the dice to bring it out of the end zone did not work out as he stopped at the 13. Line gets set, first down. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. Never underestimate the power of moving forward and creating breathing room. He's up to the 17. He'll try it again. He'll be brought down, and that's the final play of the half. That's going to wrap up the first half here, and now we join Kevin with the halftime update. Guys, think of all the big-time players who've been a part of this game. And we have a few more vying for that status so far today in an always emotional duel between the Longhorns and the Aggies. Each of these two offenses has looked like well-oiled machines, but it doesn't take a genius to figure out these two passing attacks have run circles around these defenses. Man or zone, nothing seems to be working, and I'm not sure that defensive coordinator is going to be able to figure things out here at halftime. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how this rivalry matchup plays out. All right, Kevin about ready to get things cranked back up here. The Longhorns will kick it away first and will start the second half. Fielded in the end zone. It's Owens. Just trucks through it. I know he thinks he can house every return, but sometimes you just have to take a knee as he stopped at the 14. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. If they're going to get on top in this game, they're going to have to find a way to get the running game going in the second half. I agree, so it can create some more balance, some more unpredictability. I feel like this defense has got a good beat on what they're doing, especially if they don't mix it up a little bit. So I do look for a little second half running the football palmer out of this group. And I think the thing, Dave, is they just got to be more physical. I don't think this is a scheme question about trying different run plays. I think it's up to the big fellas up front. They've just got to make the decision that they're going to be tougher here in the second half. They can win this game. To the air. It's Wegman. Going to try to pop one on the screen. They make the stop, but a good pickup there on first down. Well, a nice gainer on that running back screen. Now, how about the offensive line getting downfield and getting blocks? Really help out the back, find some space to go to work. Going to run it. It's Moss. And this one will be stopped for no gain. Everybody talks about DBs. They talk about dropping in coverage and not being physical. <laughs> that DB begs to differ. Great tackle coming up, playing physical like a linebacker. In the gun, looking to throw on third down. And the incomplete pass will bring up fourth down. And I like the aggressiveness on third and short, trying to throw the football, take advantage of a look that they got. They weren't successful, and now it's fourth and short territory. Who knows what they're going to do. And he's going to get it up to about the 29-yard line before he's brought down. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. Jesse, a very productive drive last time, wound up with a touchdown. Yeah, mixing and matching play calling really well. Nice balance on that last one. And the ball is intercepted. Trying to take it back. And they capitalize not only on the pick, but the great return to give the offense tremendous field position. Defensive backs have tough jobs. I mean, you think about whether you play nickel, whether you play dime, whatever it is, you put more DBs on the field. It's more speed. It's more guys that can cover. But they also 
just got to cover that ground, but to cover the ground and make the pick, a lot of times you don't see that. Superb effort by that guy. The first down for the offense. Give to the running back. And a pickup of eight opens a world of opportunities on second and two. Went to the running game on first down. Now here they come again. From the gun, running back on the move. Couldn't really get started there. Pick up of one to the 35. If every journey begins with a step, this offense needs to step into a third down conversion and then try to turn it into some scores and fast. All the way down to the 25-yard line. They move the sticks. It's first down. And the Aggies come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there for his second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. The hand to the running back. Blast his way ahead, but not much room. A pickup of one to the 24. Balls at the 24. A lot of confidence in their kicker from here, but they'd love to take it off of his foot and convert the first down. They'll throw it to the back on the screen. And there were no creases or crevices to run through, and they shove him out of bounds. And they'll send out the field goal unit. He'll line it up from the right side. A 37-yarder coming up kick is good. The offense has three points to show for the drive. So after the last drive ended with a field goal, the kickoff team out there to send it away. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. Well, the good news about this drive, Jesse, it can't go worse than last time through a pick on the first play. No, it certainly can't. I think one good way, David, to help your quarterback turn the page is just find him an easy completion here and let him get back into a run. Yeah, or find him an easy handoff. Just hand the football off, maybe get the ground game going, maybe jumpstart this offense a little bit. This quarterback is so lucky that ball wasn't picked off. Of course, he threw a pick on the last drive, and this one, the defender dropped. This quarterback's got to get his act together. You know, David, this is really what game managing is. Nice pickup on second down to help them on the next play. Yeah, I think people look at that negative sometimes, finding a quarterback that's a game manager. No, you should break. Set up good situations. I'm, I'm way more successful when I can keep those sticks in a more manageable situation and I'm not as predictable on a third down. He wants to throw. And the pass is incomplete, but there is a flag down on the play. Let's see what that's about. It knows the receivers. He don't see So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. No question they wanted to get the ball to their playmakers, and both receivers have come up big through three. When you're dealing with a deficit like this, it's all about somebody stepping up to make a play, and you might as well start here in the fourth quarter. First down for this offense. Dropping back, it's Ewers. Right down the middle. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Man, this quarterback is living dangerously right now. Obviously, he threw a pick on the last drive. He's trying to complete that throw, but the defender gets a hand on it, tips it up in the air. That's oh no. That is an oh no situation. They're lucky that one hit the ground. The Longhorns are marching down the field. Coming out on first down with the play fake. Showing the arm strength to the... Here's an interception. Oh, did they need that turnover. And they'll close in on him after a good return on the interception. We talk about having to have it. We need a 
to force the turnover. We had to get the football back. They're in such a good position to run out the clock, try to win. No, sir. Our ball, first down. say howdy to the Aggie offense again. David, they had to settle for a field goal last time. Yeah, they moved the ball down the field, Jesse. Just couldn't put it in the end zone in that red area where they needed to be a little bit more efficient. I think they just got to do a little better job of executing on this drive, and we'll see if they can punch it in for six this time. Looking for a physical attack from the gun. Pretty good effort on that one to work his way up to the 42. Come to the line at the 42, facing a third and short. From the gun, wants to pass. And they can't make the play on third down. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. And this is why coaches get paid the big bucks. Tough decision on your own side of the field. Fourth quarter, I'm trailing. Is it go time now, or do I trust my defense? And the coverage team able to make the tackle. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. That last drive was promising for a while, but you just can't mess it up at the end with the pick, Jesse. No, you've got to be able to finish drives, especially in this game if you're going to win. And, David, they've got to be able to eliminate the mental mistakes. Yeah, and I don't think you get conservative or play it safe. You can trust your guy. I think you put the ball right back in his hands and let him do his thing. Second down coming up. They'll keep it on the ground. They want this clock to move. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Defense doing their job getting that last stop, and now third in California. Not a lot of play calls to convert this, so defensively, let's get off the field now. The clock's running. We need to give it back to our offense with as much time as possible. Basic connection. And it is a chunk play, a huge gain on that one before the defense brings it to an end. And what a big conversion by the offense there. With the lead late, you're just trying to stay on the field and bleed the clock. At this point, it's tick, 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 tick. Let's run this clock down as low as we can before we snap it. Wide open downfield. And he was off to the races. Finally tripped up at the 36. You know what's interesting? At this point of the game, with the lead in the fourth quarter, the defense is expecting them to run the ball. And because they're putting so many guys close to the line of scrimmage, they're taking advantage, throwing it. Two straight completions now back to back. Well, offensively, they knew they were going to have some matchups they could take advantage of in this one. And all of a sudden, this quarterback has now over 300 yards passing in the game. Defensively, David, he has got them on their heels. And he's been showing you a little bit of everything. He can throw it all over the field to all different receivers, to his tight ends, to his running backs. Really has the ability to spread it around. And now over 300 yards. Still some time left, and he can put up even bigger numbers. And, heck, go chase some awards, man. Get some postseason awards. Get an All-American. Just put up a day. Fires deep toward the end zone. And he's got it for the touchdown, and that one just might do it. Number two. And, you know, late in the games, offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball. I love this offense. They were aggressive. They got another score added to the lead. Now you're trying to salt this game away. He'll try to tack on one more. And the extra point is true, and they have a two-touchdown lead, up 14 in the fourth. The kickoff team takes the field to boot this one away. He'll start the return inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. First down here for the offense. They'll start this drive with a pass. Almost had the completion. Just missed it. Well, that's not on the quarterback. I know it's not easy completing some of these out routes, especially at the college level, but that's a play the receiver's got to make. Wants to throw. It's Wegman. Unloads to the right. Pulls it in. 
And the explosive play, and they're on the move all the way to the 44. It's a first down. They'll stop the clock to reset the chains. Offense up tempo. He's looking to throw it. And he got a hand in there, knocks it away incomplete. Well, I know that one fell incomplete, but what a day this guy's had throwing the football. Multiple touchdowns, and he's done a really nice job with his decision-making. Hasn't thrown any picks, which has really helped keep this offense on schedule. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Looking to throw it again. Oh, he's ready to take a shot. It's a big stride inside the 10. And the defense couldn't corral him, and he took it all the way. Touchdown, Aggie. And listen, still a ways to go. But great job by this offense of getting you back in the ball game. Now, we got a one-possession game. We got our score. We did what we're supposed to do. Now, how do we get this stop? Now, the defense has to come up big and get me the rock back. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. A very efficient five-way scoring drive. Trailing by a touchdown here in the fourth, they'll try to get it back with the onside kick. They'd hope to get that thing bouncing around, but the hands team is able to corral it. So now the Longhorns take over and they'll send out the offense. These are the games. These are the moments. This is the opportunity for the finish that people remember in rivalries like this one. And those highlights that are shown for years and years to come. These big-time moments, Palmer, coming down to the wire, who steps up and makes the big-time play. And this is why you lift the weights in the offseason. This is why you do all the gassers and all the sprints for moments like this. Game on the line in one of the biggest games of the year. Defense uses a timeout quickly, trying to get that ball back and preserve time for their offense. These fans stepping up to help this defense on third down. On the ground, trying to pull the plug on this clock. That play just never had a chance. They knock him down for a loss of five. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. And the Longhorns decide to punt it away. First punt of the day, and he'd love to lock them up close to their goal line. Fair catch called for and made. No time to waste here. They've got to get set and pick up chunk yardage. He'll start this drive firing. He wants a big play here late. Snatches it on the run. Can anyone catch him? Touchdown, Texas A&M. And once he found some daylight, it was time to make a house call. What a massive play by this offense. Man, you needed it. Great execution. Now kick the extra point, tie this football game up late, or you go for two. You go for the win. You try to take the lead. That is a you decision. This is supposed to be the easiest play in football, except when there's this much pressure. And no problem on that extra point, and we have a tie ball game here in the fourth. If only it were always this easy for the offensive coordinator. One play, big chunk yardage, put points on the board just like that. He'll take a knee as a touchback save every second he can as they try to put together this final drive. Here comes the Texas offense. A pretty good bit of ground to cover here, Jesse, but they've got some time to work with. They do, so tempo is going to be important. you got to go fast. you just got to make good decisions at the quarterback position. And those good decisions are... Brings it down on the right side. Timeout on the field, and everybody want to make sure they're organized as we come down the gut of the game. That big play, a perfect example of why receivers relentlessly work on the release. Yeah, work on that release, work on their hands getting by the DB. When I'm getting that press man and he's up in my face, man, that is a hard assignment if I don't really get my hands on the receiver. And he wins off the line of scrimmage, quarterback finds him, sees man coverage, makes a big play. 
The offense wastes no time getting the timeout call. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. Looking to take a shot. He caught it! They get him stopped at the two, but it'll be first and goal. Well, Reese, you and I were talking about this before the game. How is this defense going to be able to deal with all the speed they have offensively? You saw them just rip off a big play. And, Jesse, now their head's spinning just a little bit. Give up a big chunk play, and it's right back at them. Touchdown, Longhorns! And with that, they move out front here in the fourth. And, man, this game has been awesome. Some back and forth. Now you take the lead late. Nice job by the offense. And now you just need your defense to come through for you. One more time. One stop. Less than a minute remaining. Go out there. Finish this thing. Getting set for the point after. The extra point is good. And now in the fourth, they're up by a touchdown and an extra point. Quick work on that scoring drive. Just four plays. And finish the deal with the short touchdown run from the two. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. And they're going to have to fight this defense, and they're also up against it with time, Jesse. Yeah, no doubt, Reese. And this quarterback now, he's going to have to show off his poise, David. They practice these late-game situations, but how's this guy going to respond? And I got a little bit of time to work with here, so I watch the defense, and if they're going to drop back and play real conservative like they tend to do late in the game, let's get a few shots over the middle first before we have to take that deep shot. They've got to move quickly here. Still a chance, but they've got to force the ball down the field. Looking downfield, it's Wegman. Pocket starts to collapse. And he just throws it away on third down. I don't think you can give up on a play like that. Trailing by a touchdown, this fourth down opportunity is gargantuan. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. He's going up top here late in the game. Fires it into traffic and it's picked off. And he is brought down after the interception and the clock strikes zero here in the fourth quarter. There is a long and storied history of great games between these two rivals, and this chapter adds another to that legacy. I'm really impressed by the poise by the winning team as well here. They weren't overhyped in this game. They came out, they looked prepared, they were calm, definitely confident. And David, they were able to go out and execute well enough to get this win. And it's hard in these rivalry games with all the emotions running so deep. Like, you sometimes get overzealous. Sometimes you get too many penalties. It's hard to rein in your emotions, but they did. They kept it in check, and now bragging rights for a whole year. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.